Hi, my name is Jonas Urbanas. I am a senior product engineer at Mori Microwave, and I'm standing next to a Mori Microwave passive vector receiver load pool setup. Load pool has long been regarded as one of the most important active device characterization techniques, and there are two main reasons for that. The first reason is the fact that active devices tend to change their performance depending on what load impedance is being presented to them. So if I was looking for a maximum efficiency impedance point on the Smith chart, maximum gain point or maximum output power point, I would need to present various impedances on the load of the device under test and I would need to characterize the performance of the device at each of those impedance points. And that's what the load pool enables us to do. The second reason is the fact that as we increase the drive power on the input of the device under test, we might drive the device into a gain compression region. The gain compression region is a nonlinear operating region of the device, and there are nonlinear phenomena present, such as frequency mixing or harmonic generation, but also the impedances that we found optimum for maximum efficiency or maximum power in the linear region have now shifted to a completely different location because we drove the amplifier or a device under test into compression. And load pool then allows us to characterize both linear and nonlinear device performance under various load impedances and load terminations. In this setup, we're using a Copper Mountain Technologies Vector Network Analyzer with direct receiver access, which is used to measure the A and B waves on the input and on the output of the device under test. We have an AMCAD PAV system, which is providing the DC power to the device under test. We also have a Mori amplifier, which is driving the input of the device, which in this case is a 10 watt Cregan Hemt transistor. We have two low loss couplers, one is on the input and one is on the output. We have two Mori BiSDs. We're also using a passive impedance tuner, which is presenting different impedances to the device under test, and that enables load pull. And finally, the entire network is terminated with a 50 ohm load. IVCAD is the industry's premier device characterization and modeling software suite, and it is brought to you by Mori Microwave and AMCAD Engineering. It enables comprehensive device characterization through traditional vector receiver, active, and hybrid load pool measurement configurations, as well as DC IV, PAST IV, and PAST S parameter measurements. The measurement data can be readily analyzed within IVCAD by employing its advanced visualization and data analysis tools. Moreover, the obtained small signal measurement data can be used to easily extract various compact transistor models, and load pool data can be employed to generate the highly accurate, nonlinear, enhanced polyharmonic distortion based behavioral transistor models. All this is available within a single software suite. To measure the DUT, we will first need to bias it. For that, we need to go to the DUT biasing window, specify the QS and voltage, which in this case I'm using minus 4 and 28 volts. We need to apply those voltages and turn on the DC power supplies. Here we can see that very little drain current is flowing and our QS in current should be 100 milliamps. To get to 100 milliamps, we can either manually change the gate voltage or we can use an optimization option. For the optimization, we need to set the desired current, the minimum gate voltage and the maximum gate voltage. We can then change the maximum loop count and maximum sweep step. And once we're happy with our settings, we can click Optimize. During the optimization, the software is automatically going to sweep the gate voltage. And once it finds the correct gate voltage that enables 100 milliamps to be flowing through the DUT, the biasing optimization is stopped. Now we need to configure our device measurement. To do that, we need to go back to the Setup and Measurement window. We need to specify again what kind of sweep we're performing and in this case we're doing a power sweep. Then we need to go to the common tab, specify the name and the location of the measurement file where all the data is going to be saved. Provide a comment that would be useful for the measurement.
We need to then set the stop conditions for maximum drain current, maximum gate current, maximum gain compression, and also for the input gap. Then we need to configure our measurement. We select load pull. We enable the impedance sweep. Here we need to specify the impedance pattern at which we're going to be performing the load pull measurement. However, we don't know where exactly the optimum impedances lie at this point. So we need to perform a course measurement around a 50 ohm condition to see to which direction we need to go on the Smith chart with our impedance pattern. Once we're done selecting impedance points, we need to click add for them to be committed on the Smith chart. Then we need to specify the start and stop power for the impedance sweep, as well as the step size between the measurements. Once we're happy with our measurement configuration, we can click start. As the measurement is running, we can see that the device bias conditions are measured and displayed in the top left corner of the measurement window for each load impedance state and input power level in real time. Also, all computed device parameters such as the output power, power gain, power added efficiency and others are also shown immediately below the biasing information. At the top of the measurement window, we can see two Smith charts. One is displaying the location of the source and input impedance points and the second one is displaying the load impedance points. The impedance values are computed and displayed in real time for each input power level, thus the impedance movement trajectories can be easily investigated as the device under test is driven into the gain compression region. The load impedance Smith chart is by default showing the requested impedance points that have been defined in the impedance sweep section prior to the measurement. As the measurement is performed, red asterisks appear on the Smith chart showing the actual load impedance location for each input power level. These load impedance values are computed in real time during the measurement from the acquired incident and reflected power waves at the vector calibration planes. Therefore, no tunity embedding is involved, which greatly improves the measurement accuracy. Finally, the computed parameter values obtained during a power sweep are plotted on a Cartesian plot at the bottom of the measurement window. If during the measurement we reached a stop condition that we defined in the common tab, the software will warn us about it at the end of the measurement. Now we can load the measurement results in the data sources tree on the left hand side of the screen, and we can enable this data set for visualization in IVCAD Extended Local Viewer. Here we want to select the impedances for which we want to visualize the measurement data, and once we've made the selection, we can start plotting the load pool contours. To plot the load pool contours against gain compression, we need to select the gain compression with respect to the maximum for the x-axis of the Cartesian plot at the top of the screen. Then we can specify the desired gain compression point using the horizontal scroll bar for the x-value. In this case, I am interested in the contours plotted for the 3 dB gain compression point. These are the contours at the maximum output power. As you can see, the software is predicting optimum impedances on the left-hand side of the Smith chart. We can also change the plotting parameter to maximum PAE at 3 dB gain compression point. Here we can also see that optimum impedances are also on the left-hand side of the So now that we identified the general position of the optimum impedances on the Smith chart, we can perform a fine impedance and power sweep measurement in that location of the Smith chart with the hopes of closing the contours at maximum output power and maximum PAE at 3 dB gain compression point. For this measurement, we're going to be configuring an arc impedance sweep. We're going to clear the old impedance points from the previous measurement. We're going to set the maximum magnitude to 0.85. Maximum phase to 180 degrees. Minimum phase to 90 degrees. Minimum magnitude to 0 0.4. And angular resolution of 8 degrees. When we're happy with our impedance pattern selection, 
we need to click add, which will commit those impedance points on the Smith chart for the measurement. Then we need to go to the common tab, change the name of the measurement file, And for this measurement, we're also going to be measuring the second harmonic. So we're going to be performing load pool at 2.5 GHz fundamental, but also measuring the second harmonic at 5 GHz. If we're happy with our configuration, we can start the measurement. Again, a warning message is shown telling us that we have reached the specified gain compression point at some impedance points. Once we click the load button, the measurement results are added to the data sources list. Now we can go to the extended load pool viewer to check the results. Here we can untick the previous measurement result and select the new ones. Just like previously, we can use the slider on the horizontal scroll bar to change the gain compression value. In this case, we're interested in the measurement results obtained at the 3 dB gain compression point. As we can see, the contours are nice and closed, and we can readily obtain the optimum impedances for maximum PAE at the 3 dB gain compression point. We can also do the same thing for power gain, and output power. Additionally, we can plot multiple contours on top of each other. So for example here, we can show the maximum output power and maximum efficiency contours one on top of the other. Also, in the properties section, we can change the way these contours are rendered. So for example, we can change their fit accuracy. That means increasing the number of interpolation points which makes the contours look smoother. Also, we can switch the data plotting from 2D to 3D, which enables a different perspective for us to analyze our measurement results. We can also change the number of ISO contour levels we want to display. and we can disable the load impedance points to improve contour visibility. In addition to the extended load pool viewer, we can use a load pool viewer. Here we can display just the power sweep results. In IVCAD, measurement results plotting is dynamic and we can select and deselect impedances of interest as required. We can also change the information that is being presented in this window. So for example, if I wanted to look at the output power of the second harmonic, I could easily change this by going to custom, choosing the frequency for the Y axis data, and the plot is going to be automatically updated with the second harmonic information. Switching between different measured device parameters is just as easy. We can go back to custom, go back to the fundamental frequency, and for example select the power gain to be displayed for each of the measured impedance points. So this concludes our presentation on Mori Microwave Passive Vector Receiver Load Pool Setup using a Copper Mountain Technologies Vector Network Analyzer. For more information about this or any other device characterization solutions from Mori Microwave, please visit our website at www.morimw.com.